Hey guys, I'm here with the famous, the immutable Max Hillebrand from the World Crypto Network, representing here at the Lightning Network Hack Day. Say hello to the crowd, Max. What's up, Piers? Thank you very much for inviting me. Great that you are recording this event. Yeah, thank you. Because yeah. a, lo a lot of knowledge is being shared here. The brightest minds of Bitcoin and Lightning, of course, are here. Uh, so very good uh, to, to share this knowledge with all of you watching out there. Perfect. Yeah, no, it's really good. Like some, what I love about this event, and I, I've been, we've been live streaming it, the ones in Berlin and New York and now here, is that it's not like a normal conference where mm -hmm. these normal conferences are just full of bankers and regulators and just the boring side of the thing. I mean, I know that they kind of have they have their place, of course, but really where the real action happens, where the where we stop complaining and start yeah. building, <laughs> is um, is here at, at, at conventions yeah. like this, yeah. um, and you know, hearing the the real the technicians the coming and really broadcasting everything they've worked on for the last year and sharing that information with the crowd is, is just wonderful to see. Yeah, yeah really. And we've, we've achieved so much in just one year, right? Yeah. Just if you think back last year, we had almost nothing in Lightning and now it's this yeah. uh, and and it's it's really cool to to see what what everyone is up to and and to to catch up with, with who's well, who's working on what and how far have they come. Uh, for example, I've just seen another demo of the Donner Labs. Uh, which is a really, really cool uh, gaming company that produces a Donner uh, dungeon game. Uh, and I've, I've followed them for I'm on the World Crypto Network as well for many, many months now. And now they just to see uh, like the latest state of, of where they're at. Yeah. It's incredible. It's yeah. incredible. And that's just one example of the many. I know. And you know, the, the thing was when, when the user activated soft fork started to pressure the entire community to, to say, hey, let's just get SegWit in. I really, somehow I, I thought there was this big backlog mm. of stuff that was ready yeah. to push through. And then SegWit came in and we didn't see that massive pile on of, of, of work. I mean, there was a backlog mm. ready to come in, but now that we've had SegWit for what, nearly two years now, yeah. um, it is absolutely accelerating. Yeah. We, yeah. we right now have a coffee machine right here uh, with a life brisa taking lightning payments um, you know, one of the big critiques uh, from most people that don't like Lightning is that no one is using it yet. But that's not true. Uh, no. the, the, the hardcore at the edges that are building this stuff are starting to use it. Yeah. And, um, you know, when we're talking about millions potentially of transactions per second, um, with a one megabyte block uh, allowing me at home or uh, someone in Myanmar to run a full node, um, that that really for me is the pinnacle of a good decentralized network. Yeah, exactly, and it starts with the individuals, right? Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you could have used Lightning Network back in the end of 2017, and you could have bought your your stickers on Blockstream shortly after, right? <laughs> Uh, and for like, I bought the first potatoes on Lightning in March 2018, right? There was like stuff was there, you could use it, but of course it was very niche, it was very, very difficult to set up, but mm -hmm. we're getting more and more and more in there. Like for example, I just finished a talk of uh, Staticus on the Bitbox, yeah. another plug and play Lightning Network Bitcoin full node, uh, which is really cool, right? We need more and more of that, the Noddle is another yeah. one, right? Yeah. Uh, and if we have that, and it really becomes as easy as plugging something into your router uh, mm -hmm. to set it up, mm -hmm. uh, that really helps with onboarding. And we did not even have that before Lightning because well having a full node was, was cool and all but you didn't really use it too much but yeah. now with these higher level things that we can do for example Lightning uh, it just becomes much more well um, there, there, there's much more of a, of a demand for actually using Libra sound money uh, and then for, for doing it the right way you know what I'd love to see I'd really love to see a router you know my home router is a Fritz box it's a standard thing it comes off the shelf we plug it in it delivers me into now I would love if my router was that plug and play yeah. lightning node yeah. uh, that, w that watches my wallet for me and I could even uh, pass messages uh, yeah. and, and become a routing node. It's, um, it's really, really exciting. I think this is all the stuff that's going to be happening. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are you looking forward to here on the, uh, on the schedule? Oh, the, the, I have so many people here. Um, I mean, the, the, every talk is fantastic, but the cool thing is, thanks to you, I don't have to watch them live uh, because there's <laughs> a recording, so afterwards I can watch them on 2x speed, uh, so that's yes. nice. Uh, so what I'm here at, at this event is just to talk to the, everyone yeah. uh, because there's so many cool peers here and there's so much awesome stuff that they're working on, so yeah. I, I try to get, uh, well, just yeah, just stay up to date with what is going on because it's ridiculously fast. Yeah. Uh, so, so talking to the people, seeing what they're up to, 
um, and, and talking a bit myself about, about all the cool stuff. Mm. Uh, World Crypto Network videos and, and small workshops and stuff. Yeah, I actually wanted to get this stream onto the World Crypto Network. It just, again, too much stuff was happening and I didn't manage to get it in time. But next, <laughs> next time it will be live. For all our World Crypto Network fans out there, please share and like and subscribe and yes, all that yes. stuff because it does help people to find this video and find this information. And uh, rather than just having a few hundred people watching it yep. here, let's have thousands and thousands of people exactly. discovering this information. Yeah, it's, um, you know, one thing that I'm really looking forward to is, is the actual hackathon. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what projects have you seen out there so far? Have you, have you talked to any of them yet? I, I guess it's just started, so. Yeah. Um, I th so, uh, Stepan Snigerov from Crypto Advanced is working on something really, really interesting. So, so their main project is a really secure hardware wallet uh, that, that is scriptable with business logic, so you can use it for Lightning Network or for coin joins. Wow. So really, really cool. And what they're working on here today is that they, that they want to have a, a Lightning Network ATM uh, that where you can pay and, and receive in Lightning, but it's completely offline. So the, the ATM itself does not have to be connected to the internet, but you, you prove to the ATM that you've actually paid it. And so only the sender needs to be online and your phone is. Uh, but this means that it's, it's just much more, I would say, easy uh, to set up a bunch of different ATMs. I think that is, that is something that is, that is really interesting. Absolutely. ATMs are, are, are these, these on-ramps which people know, they understand. Yeah. When they go up to a machine, they understand that, you, you, well, the most uh, common thing is to take money out and these of course allow you to also put money in mm -hmm. these machines so um, they're definitely a very very important part of the ecosystem now I watched your talk uh, your amazing long talk on the economics of Bitcoin at the on the online lightning mm -hmm. network hack mm -hmm. day um, and it was a great talk really really fantastic one thing I was missing and it, this is one thing that constantly comes up when people talk to me is that the economics of what the miners will receive mm, yeah. um, compared yeah. to on-chain transactions. Uh, you know, we're mm. talking uh, now. We, we have on the other the other forks. We're saying, well, you know, if you if you have more transactions on-chain, you collect those fees, and the miners mm. can live off those once the uh, the chain, the actual uh, mining reward yeah. runs out. Um, how do you see that playing out in this world where the Lightning Network does take up? Uh, consume a large mm -hmm. portion of the fees and then settle it. Yeah, great question. And I think uh, just because we remove information from the blockchain by having these state channels, uh, as in Lightning Network or, or some other stuff that we can do on higher layers, um, although yes, this will of course increase the total amount of throughput, but it also will mean that we still have transaction on chain. Right, you want to open a channel uh, and you want to close it again. And then maybe you want to do it in a channel factory uh, of whatnot. Uh, so I really think that the, the cool thing with Lightning is that it just, it grows the pot in general. Uh, and therefore, although we have more and more transactions off-chain, we also have the tra transactions on-chain. And especially because they are more, uh, let's say, economically viable, right? If I just make one on-chain transaction to buy coffee, well, then this is only the one transaction. I only get this one economic good for it. Mm. But all of a sudden, if I open a Lightning Network channel, uh, and then I know that I will use this channel long term over the span of one year and I will make hundreds of thousands of transactions uh, and buy hundreds of coffees with it. Mm. Then I'm much more willing to pay a larger transaction fee uh, to, to get this one settlement or, or well this opening or the settlement transaction onto the chain. Uh, and especially, of course, we, we are here with race conditions, right? Mm. We, uh, if, if you uh, have a lightning channel and there's a malicious party, uh, if you're not vigilant and if you do not include a defensive transaction, then the malicious party might steal from you, right? So, so here again, uh, it's, uh, you're incentivized to maybe even pay a little higher as other people would. Uh, so I think because with just two on-chain transactions, we have a, a, a huge benefit and we can do many, many, many off-chain transactions that the price that we pay for these on-chain transactions can be relatively high because the individual has a lot of use just for opening and closing a channel because, well, for off-chain, it, it, it just unlocks the Bitcoin to, to more liquid use. So what would you say for people living in developing countries that are living on smaller amounts, you know, some, some people on $5 a day, some people on 2 to open these channels will be relatively expensive. Um, are there are there solutions to allow, like, say, a send many or, or something like that, where where you can pull within many people and open channels 
Yeah. Is that is that available? What what are the solutions mm. coming out of the the community yeah. in terms of these? Uh, mm, mm, I guess uh, not so. <laughs> uh, funded yeah. uh, individuals? Well, I mean, uh, defense is expensive, right? And uh, for example, if, if you want to have an attack helicopter to, to defend yourself, well, you have to pay a lot for that, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and I would say same as with Bitcoin. It, it just, stuff is difficult and stuff is costly and, and people really have to sacrifice in order to use these tools, yes. Um, now we can use technology to decrease the barrier to entry. Right, and to make sure that already with Bitcoin today, if you use it, it's a very cheap tool uh, for the amount of defense that you get. Mm. Uh, and I think with Lightning Network, we can do this even more because, again, there is so much happening off chain. Mm. Uh, and I think uh, we're really excited about, for example, channel factories, uh, which is basically um, so, so you have several uh, you have several coins, several inputs, and they belong to individuals. Right. And then they spend these coins uh, and they generate one single output. Uh, so let's say 10 individuals, 10 inputs, and you spend one output or, or you generate one output. And this output is a 10 out of 10 Mu signature, a Schnorr multi-signature. On chain, it looks like a single public key. Uh, so it's very data size efficient. But there are now all of a sudden 10 people here in this channel factory. And with the magic of well, cryptography and how these things are implemented, all these 10 individual people can open channels in between each other without another on-chain transaction. So now you have instant off-chain channel openings within the Lightning Network channel factory. And then if, for example, Alice is one of the 10 peers and Alice is connected to Bob, who is in a different channel factory somewhere else, then people within the first channel factory can route a payment to other channel factories through Alice, right? Because her node is still connected. Uh, so here with this, you have one chain on-chain transaction and maybe 10, 100, I don't know, 1,000 maybe individuals within this channel factory uh, where you can have instant opening and closing. Uh, so I think that is really cool for, for communities, for example, uh, right? that we have a WCN channel factory, for example, or you a Voltoro channel factory for, for your customers at the exchange. Yeah. Uh, and stuff like this, we have so much to improve, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah speaking of exchanges, I mean, we, we started accepting Lightning payments uh, about a year and a half ago, and, and it was uh, more of a test thing. We only allowed 100 Satoshis at the time, but uh, <laughs> just to, you know, we didn't want to get too reckless. <laughs> Um, but it, um, it really w showed us the potential of what we can do with this. And, and for one of the biggest things that I can see is allowing people not to trust our hot wallet, yeah. allowing people to snap orders directly from the order book yes. fr while holding their key yeah. so they can go send, it, it hits us and we do an instant order. Yeah. And if that was for another crypto that also had a lightning channel, we could also then instant send it back. Yeah, um, yeah there is a level of trust there in terms of us matching those orders, but um, but really the, the level of trust is, is minimized a lot. And um, and this is uh, this is fantastic. You know, yeah. I, the last thing we want to do is uh, hold too many Bitcoin in hot wallet. Yeah, yeah you know, exactly. It's just, no matter how, I mean, we've been around since 2015, never had a hack, never anything, but it's, uh, you know, it's definitely something that people shouldn't be doing. They should be trusting their own nodes. Yeah, yeah, exactly, absolutely. And I think Lightning Network, or well, payment channels more specifically, are huge for exchanges. Because yeah. what you also could, for example, have is that you have a direct channel to Voltoro, uh, and then uh, during the night, you have like you push all the, the money back to your side of the channel. Mm -hmm. uh, but then if you want to trade, and you maybe you still even require the custodial function for something, yeah, for then market makers, Probably. Exactly, yeah. right. Then I push as a market maker, push the money to your hot wallet yep. on your side of the channel. You can do the custodial market making stuff. And at mm. the end of the day, it's a free gratis transaction to simply shift the Bitcoin back to my side yeah. in your internal custodial database. You mm. do the uh, adequate changes. Yeah. And that way, again, we reduce the risk yeah. uh, and we, we spread out the money and we don't have the centralized honeypot where, where all the Satoshis are in one huge wallet, yes. but we spread them out. Yeah. Uh, and I think your, your channels are, are just really cool for this, especially for day trader or market makers. Yeah, and arbitrage. Oh, yeah. You know, allowing exchanges to, to uh, or bots to keep exchanges at a similar, similar yeah. rate uh, really will, will help the industry mm -hmm. to stabilize uh, this asset class. And uh, I think this can't be understated that these, these low uh, 
you know, when especially when you have these mass volatility times and on-chain gets totally crowded and people can't get their stuff off of exchanges or out of exchanges, yeah. um, it's, uh, it's 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 really difficult. So this this would really really help. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, there's there's a lot of stuff happening. Um, we're very excited here uh, to be part of the Munich. Uh, thanks to Fulmo and all the team out there. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, I guess what what have we got coming up next? We have uh, a, we have a stand-in speaker giving us talk about what are we, what are you talking about? Macaroons. Macaroons, uh -huh, delicious. Maca macaroons. So we were talking about macaroons. We're talking about noodles. We're talking about wasabi. It's uh, like, yeah. it's crazy, we have so much to eat. Yeah, so much to eat, so much to eat. So uh, please stick around. Uh, you will, uh, what we're gonna do is have this uh, loop that's totally silent, so just keep your speakers turned on, and as soon as the next speaker comes on, you'll hear it uh, blaring out your speakers, so you don't need to sit there watching uh, the, the loop. Um, there is a little bit of a wait uh, for a while, everyone's having lunch, but after that, uh, some very, very fantastic speakers, so stay tuned. All right, Max, thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>